it's like this. I like to try and get up in the trees, have a good look about, get nice and high, especially in these nice shallow bays. Try and find the fish, see if they're grouped up anywhere. Quite often you'll find them down here in the shallows, but unless you've got a bit of height, you're not going to be able to see them drifting about over the shallow bays and stuff. So tricky, busy lakes like the Pan, so it's, it's not mega hard water. It's, it's historically was very difficult and I know a lot of people still only catch one or two fish a year. Um, I think waters like this, you have to really track them down and find out a little bit of history about where catches came in the past. Find, especially if you're fishing for particular fish, um, find them zones and fish for them. All fish tend to have preferred areas. Uh, they have preferred um, routes in and out of areas and particular times of years they're hold in particular areas as well. So like a venue like this, there's a lot of bars in there here. Um, so the fish tend to use the bars or the gullies in between the bars to get around a lot. So uh, finding the, the right routes to target and um, yeah, pick them off as they come through. So I've been fishing about, about 35 years. I started when I was about four or five years old. My whole family fished and it was kind of inevitable that I'd start fishing at some point or another. So um, when I was probably about four or five, they took me to the local pier, did a little bit of fishing with a little spool of line, pencil going through the middle, throwing a weight out into the, into the sea and I caught a little Dover sole. So that's how I started out. Um, I then progressed into match fishing um, I actually went on to represent England and I was a junior world champion when I was 17. Um, during that time I also did a lot of canal fishing, river fishing um, and I got into carp fishing probably when I was in my sort of mid-teens. Um, and then as time went on I became more and more interested in my carp fishing and by the time I got to my early 20s I was pretty much just fishing for carp most of the time. Um, and I started off on some of the large coastal pits um, and the canals um, and nowadays I fish venues like Coninbrook and the Pan where I'm chasing more sort of elusive, more sought after fish. My favourite tactic I would say based on the type of venues I fish nowadays I like to try and train fish to feed on spots so I spend a lot of time walking the pits, climbing up trees, up at all hours watching, looking for the fish to tell me where they want to feed. So in the early hours of the morning, they may be showing in a particular area regularly and I'll, I'll investigate them areas and try and find a spot close by. And then I tend to bait it very frequently, maybe every two or three days. And I'll, I'll get the fish to gain their confidence and then I'll fish and target them areas. And they tend, tend to be the sort of spots where I'll pick up the more uh, sort of elusive fish, the rarer ones. Um, other than that though, if I'm fishing day ticket fishery, then I tend to be very mobile, uh, fish off the barrow and, and, and chase them. My go-to rig, I'd say, is it's my variation of the German rig. Um, it's something I use a lot of the time in my fishing. I feel very confident in using it. I, can't remember the last time I lost a fish on it, but it's a touch wood. Um, it's it's a very good rig. It's a strong rig. It's very effective. Um, but other than that, I'd probably say um, a hinge stiff or or a choddy because you can pretty much throw one of them anywhere. So with the limited time I have, so I, I tend to fish just overnight sessions. Um, I've got a young family. Got. A, a busy job so I tend to finish work in the in the evenings shoot down the lake um, and I tend to because of the, the type of lakes I fish and the approach I take with the, the pre-baiting I tend to 
um, appear, appear at the lake, do a few laps, look at the areas where I've pre-baited. If I see signs of fish, then I drop onto one of them and I tend to give it a, a hit of bait and I'll normally return on my second night the next day. And quite often it's my second night where I, where I get my bites. Most memorable catcher, I'd probably say it was one eye willy on Coninbrook. It's a proper rare fish. It's come out less than a handful of times um, in, in the history of the lake. And it was, it was a fish that I'd chased for about three or four months that year. I'd found it the previous season where I thought it was holding in a particular area. And I sort of hatched a plan to try and track that fish down and try and train it to feed on a spot nearby. Um, about two or three months later, actually, I hooked it. And um, I guess one of the memorable parts of it as well is, is that my wife and children come over that morning, did the pictures with me, so I got some really great shots with myself and the, my daughter. Nightmare sessions. I've had a few of them, but there's one that really sticks in my mind. Um, I do a bit of fishing down in the Pyrenees, down in France and I was fishing on a river, there's some huge carp in this particular stretch and um, one particular evening I got a strange occurrence, uh, a fish had picked me up and gone into a nearby weed bed but it wasn't quite clear what was going on for a few minutes and then I realised so I played the fish in um, after a long drawn out battle I got it into the edge, fish was beaten, came up onto the surface, I pulled the fish towards me on the surface, it's the biggest fish I've ever hooked in my life. Um, the head literally touched the spreader block on the net and as I lifted it the hook must have been through the bottom lip of the fish and it caught in the net. Um, at that moment the fish erupted in the net and it actually shattered the net arm. Um, the fish then was just laying there on the surface. Uh, I was there on my knees, hands and knees at the side of the river trying to scoop the fish up. Every time I tried to scoop it it pushed the fish away from me because at the time I didn't realise the hook was caught in the net. Um, after about a minute of trying to do that, all of a sudden the fish just sunk down into the deep margin next to me and I could just see it sitting there, just sitting in the current and there was nothing I could do about it. Um, that pretty much haunted me for about 12 months after that so and I had an absolute nightmare the next year so um, yeah that one's definitely my worst session. So choice of rod and reel, so I've used a lot of Shimano um, kit over the years, it's something I've used probably in most of my carp fishing, so I currently use the Shimano TX9s and the Ultegra CI14s, um, lovely rods for playing fish and the reels are really smooth and reliable and they've sort of they've survived all the, the brutal sort of fishing in weed on Coninbrook. So, um, I think if they survive there and fishing on the rivers then you can take them anywhere. Um, but I guess the other, I've got another set what I use uh, for my long range fishing. So I've got a set of Shimano uh, 13 foot 3 and 3 quarters um, which I use with the same reels and I use them if I'm having to fish sort of 45, 50 wraps plus. What can the viewers expect from me? Um, I don't know. Um, I guess the viewers can expect from me, I'm quite a, a lot of my friends say I'm quite a thinking angler, so I tend to be very detailed in my approach to my angling. Um, I'm very organised because of the time I have, so I think I'll bring to Cart Vault TV um, a bit of a different approach to your average angler because I'm fishing more tricky waters, so there's going to be less fish to show you unfortunately but the fish what I do catch will probably be stunners main, mainly hopefully an old historic fish um, and also I think I'll bring um, probably more of a technical aspect to the angling rather than just um, fishing off the barrel with solid bags.